the best cover corner in the draft ecstatic that he fell to us those are some powerful words and they came from baltimore ravens general manager eric acosta after selecting nate wiggins cornerback out of clemson uh in the first round of the 2024 draft nate wiggins and your entire family hey welcome to the Baltimore Ravens officially. Uh, this was a very interesting pick. Uh, not a pick that I saw, I saw coming. Uh, kind of caught me off guard. But the way that the draft was going, the way that some players were falling and some players were rising and that there was a run on offensive linemen and a run on defensive linemen too, uh, it just made sense. All right, we're going to talk about what this pick means for the Baltimore Ravens the right here, right now, and also what it means for the future, too. Uh, before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video uh, because it helps out the channel a ton. So, after the Baltimore Ravens, they drafted Nate Wiggins uh, with pick 30 overall. Uh, I had to watch some film on Nate Wiggins to see what we like, what I felt like he did well, what I felt like he could improve on. Uh, so I did just that. Uh, one of the first things I saw, because I watched three games from him uh, after the draft was over. Uh, and what I saw from him is that he is very fast, that he's 6'1", like and he, they said he got a 4'2 he got speed. So that's a fast 40 time, but it doesn't show up on the field too. Because like we always talk about, 40 speed and game speed is much different, in my opinion. Uh, and he has both. Uh, he was very, very sticky, especially for being a sort of taller corner. Um, he is shifty. Uh, he's not stiff in the hips at all. And his the favorite thing that I loved about him the most was his closing speed. Um, like he would close on the ball, close on the receiver really, really, really fast. And again, you could think for a slightly taller corner that that may be something that they have an issue with. That may be something that they struggle with, but with him, not at all. Uh, I know Jeff Zrebic, he had highlighted some very crazy stats uh, from Nate Wiggins. Uh, he said that he has three career interceptions in college. Two of those came off of Drake May. Uh, so we're looking forward to the times that we do play against him. But um, out of those, uh, two out of those three interceptions that he caught in college, they went for pick sixes. So it's like he only feels like, hey, if I catch a pick, I'm going big. Or I ain't catching a pick at all. Uh, so way to capitalize on your opportunities, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and again, I only watched three games. So maybe in these three games, he didn't really do it too much. Uh, but he wasn't really jamming receivers like that. Now, I know he does have a smaller frame. Uh, he's tall, but kind of like, not lanky, but he, he's tall and he's not on the the media side as far as being a cornerback. Um, but that can come with time, especially when you go from college to the pros. Um, but that's one thing that I noticed about them. I didn't really see him pressing receivers like that. Uh, but again, the most important thing is that he stayed with him. He stayed with him in coverage. Jeff Zrebic also brought up a crazy, crazy statistic that... This guy last year, he literally allowed one play, one catch that went over 20 yards against him. Like when you think about that, you, you say that out loud, rewind this video again so you can hear it again. But that he literally allowed one catch over 20 yards in an entire season. That, that, that's crazy to me. That just that's insane in a good way. The good type of insane. Um, but I loved it. Now, uh, Ken McCusick. Film study Ravens, he brought out some interesting points about uh, Wiggins. He said that Wiggins was the number one cornerback on his board. And he, had the, the, he has the ideal combination of outstanding athleticism with corroborative coverage results in 2023. Uh, so he talked about the two interceptions and one pick six. But his opponent, his opposition's passer rating. So when the quarterback is throwing against him, uh, the rating was a 44.4. So very low. Now, this part right here, I didn't even think about this. Uh, but this part right here might have been my favorite stat that Ken McCusick posted on Nate Wiggins. So he only got one penalty. One penalty. You could think with a sticky corner, a lot of times it does happen with very physical corners, um, but they could, they could rack up them penalties. Shout out to Marlon Humphrey. We're going to talk about Marlon Humphrey in a couple seconds, but with him getting literally one penalty, that is amazing because that lets us know that he not only plays good football, but he plays sound football. 
Uh, and that lets us know that he knows exactly what he's doing and he knows how to do it very, very well. Now, this move, this move is a move for the right here, right now. And it's also a move for the future, in my opinion. Obviously, it's a draft pick. You draft for the future. But it's it's a little deeper than that, I think. Because for the right here, right now, um, during a live stream, and shout out to everybody that was part of the live stream. Appreciate y'all. But during a live stream. Uh, we talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, after their top two corners, I feel like the quality of their cornerbacks sort of drops off quite a bit because you got Brandon Stevens, had an amazing year last year, and we're hoping that we can, we can see consistency from him moving forward. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Baltimore Ravens, they signed him to a contract extension. But then also you got Marlon Humphrey. Now, he had been consistent for years, but then last year he had an off year. He had a lot of injuries and whatnot, missed a lot of time. Uh, and then when he played, he had a solid year when he did play, but there was a lot more hiccups than we used to. Um, but those are your top two corners, and they're pretty good. Uh, but after that, you have um, Arthur Millette. He's solid. Uh, you have Audarius Washington. We don't really know much about him because he hasn't played too much, especially recently. Uh, you have Jalen Armour Davis. He hasn't really played too much. You have Pepe Williams. He's played a little bit, but still not too much either. Um, so you got a lot of question marks at the cornerback position. So getting somebody like Nate Wiggins, that improves the depth, the quality of the depth in your secondary. And this is somebody that you can see as a rotational starter uh, in the secondary. Uh, you have the opportunity to have him outside, move Marlowe to the slot, have Brandon Stevens as your outside corner. You can do a lot of different things with him. So that'll be fun to see how Zach Orr, new defensive coordinator, how he uses Nate Wiggins with this Baltimore Ravens defense. Um, now, it's a move for the right here right now because it, because it improves the Baltimore Ravens quality uh, in the present. But with the future, how is it a future move? Well, obviously, he's a first round pick, so they got him for the next four or five years, uh, four years and then the fifth year option. But Marlon Humphrey, Marlon Humphrey, who has really experienced I really appreciated what he said because I was watching Bobby and Sarah's stream shout out to the vault uh, and they had like a star-studded lineup I mean they do this all the time they get some of the best guests in the world but um, I was watching the part of that stream where Marlon Humphrey was on there and he said something that was very very interesting and I was like wow he talked about how when he got drafted he said when he got drafted uh, Jimmy Smith was in year eight and Marlon Humphrey got drafted, and he felt like, man, like this Jimmy Smith guy, he's old. He's pretty old. But he also knew that, hey, it's the business, and eventually, basically, he will, he will be replacing him soon enough. And Marlon Humphrey, he talked about how he said it but before he before they even asked him uh, about the breakdown of the, the corners that they were talking about because they asked him about Cooley, they asked him about Cooper DeGene, and they asked him about Nate Wiggins. Um, but before they even got into that, um, he talked about how he felt like the Baltimore Ravens, they really, the most important positions for them would be corner and wide receiver. Corner and receiver. And of course, he talked about offensive line as well, but corner and wide receiver. And I thought that was very interesting, especially coming from somebody actually on the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but he did talk about how they, they do need a corner. And he said that now with, Nate, with, no, before they drafted him, because this, this was way before they drafted him, he talked about how if they were to get a corner, now the corner will be looking at Marlon Humphrey. Like, man, th this guy's the old guy now. And it's like he insinuated to how it's the possibility of the same thing happening. Uh, he didn't straight up just outright say it, but you kind of got the message in there. So that's why I say this could be a move for the Baltimore Ravens future. Uh, because I wonder, not this year, of course, but I wonder uh, if the time is ticking uh, with Marlon Humphrey as the Baltimore Ravens cornerback. Because uh, he, he could still play, obviously. And again, last year was an off year. Last year was a down year. He dealt with a lot of injuries. But this is definitely a move for the future, for sure. And teams don't normally pay three cornerbacks. Um, so we'll see what happens, but only time will tell. But I thought that was a very interesting nugget, but I did appreciate that. I appreciated that honesty and I appreciated that straightforwardness and I appreciated that business side of Marlon Humphrey because he gets the business of it. He understands what it is, uh, cause that is what it is. So I guess that'll be something to monitor over the next uh, couple of years. But 
For right now, we have a Marlon Humphrey. For right now, we have a Brandon Stevens. For right now, we have a Nate Wiggins. Um, so that makes this defense that much stronger. Again, the quality of it has taken a big upgrade. I know a lot of Ravens fans were upset that they didn't draft an offensive player, an offensive lineman. Some people were upset that they didn't draft a wide receiver. I know I was somebody that was hoping that they were going to draft Xavier Worthy. I was really hoping. And then the Chiefs, they traded with the Bills. They took their pick, and they got him. So I was like, oh, really? Come on now. And then I was hoping, all right, well, we, we ain't getting uh, Xavier Worthy. So, all right, Xavier Leggett. I go to the next Xavier. Uh, and then after the Ravens pick, Nate Wiggins, I'm like, all right, cool, cornerback. Not a big shocker, but okay, cool, I see it. Uh, so then it was the last pick in the draft. I'm like, okay, well, maybe Ravens could trade up tomorrow and pick Xavier Leggett early in the second round. But then the Bills won o'clock again. And the Panthers said, hey, we want that pick. You could have the first pick in the second round, whatever. But we want that pick. We want pick number 32. So what did the Bills do? They traded with them, and the Panthers selected Xavier Leggett. And I was like, oh, the two receivers that I wanted – both going uh, just a few picks away from each other. But it, it, it's cool, though. But um, I, I know a lot of Ravens fans felt like, oh, man, well, I guess that's it for this year. All right, I ain't watching football. I ain't watching the Ravens this year. They don't care about winning. They not trying to win. They what, Did they learn anything from last? I saw a lot of that, a lot of it. And I understand the frustration, but at the same time, the draft is not one round. It's not one round. No, the first round, that's the sexiest round. That's the round with all the lights, everybody walking down the aisle, all the picks being announced, and all the whole, the 10-minute the, the long draft picks and whatnot. We got all the commercials, ESPN, go all out for it, NFL Network, all that stuff. But it's not the only round. And I, I think a lot of people tend to forget that. Now, and I get it. You, you, you want certain players drafted high because you know the team, they're going to put that much more investment into that particular player. But the first round is not the end all be all. The Ravens don't have one draft pick in this draft. Uh, they have they they still got what eight picks left for now. They could add to those picks. They could take away if they decide to move up with those picks. They they do have options now. Something that I'm gonna leave you with, and something for you to think about uh, as we go on with our days. The 49ers, the 49ers took Pretty Ricky, wide receiver from Florida, Ricky Persaud with their uh, first round draft pick. And there were talks throughout yesterday uh, before the draft, the way before the draft started, that the 49ers are actually listening to calls on both Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Listen to calls on both of them. So I was like, whoa, both of them. I honestly, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, I feel like either one would be a great fit with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, I think, is a better receiver, like straight up receiver. Debo Samuel is just a straight up playmaker. He's just a baller because he's like Kyle Hamilton on offense. So he could do a little bit of everything. But both would be welcomed by me. But with Brandon Ayuk, somebody brought out a really good point with him. He's been more available. He's been healthier. He also costs you a lot more, but he's there when you need him. But I think that with the 49ers, with them drafting pretty Ricky, that this makes it official that either Ayuk or Debo Samuel, possibly both, but definitely at least one of them is gone for sure. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton, and it lets YouTube know that you want to continue to be recommended these videos whenever we drop one. I appreciate y'all. We'll keep y'all updated with whoever the Ravens continue to select in this year's NFL draft. Again, Nate Wiggins, welcome to Ravens Flock. We are glad to have you.